Lizzie is a children's book author and illustrator with over 35 books published. She studied art and art history at Connecticut College and illustration at the School of Visual Arts. Lizzie collaborated as illustrator on 19 books written by her mother, Anne Rockwell, including Apples and Pumpkins and Hiking Day. Lizzie volunteers every week as artistic director and community organizer for Piece by Piece, the Norwalk Community Quilt Project. So I am now going to turn the program over to Lizzie. Awesome. Uh, hello, everybody. I see uh, friends from near and far. I'm so um, touched that you've joined us. For those of you who don't know, I'm delighted to meet you. And um, I'm eager to share my story with you. So I'm going to show a whole bunch of pictures. And I'm going to share my screen to do that. Um, first, and the Norwalk Historical Society. It's really an honor to be here with you guys. Okay, so let me find the screen I'm gonna share. Um, and I'm going to go to slideshow. Okay, so does that look good to everybody? Uh, Sam and Diane, does that look okay? Yes. Yes, okay, it does. Great. Okay, great. Well, welcome. This is a Norwalk story about a group of people of all ages and backgrounds who get together to make quilts. We make quilts as personal projects to keep or to give away. We make art quilts for public installation the Growing Together quilt was, was created on request for the St Stepping Stones Museum for Children. We learn about design and personal expression. We apply math skills and learn to use special tools. We share what we know with others. We have fun. Typically, we do these things on Friday afternoons in the community room of Senior Court, a housing complex for senior citizens run by the Norwalk Housing Authority. The Housing Authority is kind enough to let us use the room at no cost, along with a storage closet. That closet is filled with tools and material, most of which have been donated or funded by our supporters. Anna Vecchia, a Norwalk native and former docent at the Norwalk Historical Society, has been the assistant teacher at Piece by Piece for the past 10 years. Our program is fueled by volunteers, but it's helpful to have one paid employee. The Senior Court Community Room is a large freestanding building in the middle of the complex. We call it the Quilt House. Outdoors, we make things grow. We also sometimes sew. During COVID-19, between June and November, we have held meetings outside. Masked and socially distanced, without restrooms, without electricity. We pick out two patches of fabric and sew them together with needle and thread. We add a patch, then another. Handwork is slow and it takes patience and intention. Despite these limits, we do what people have always done. We work with what we have and we are grateful. Our creative will is strong. Our desire to be together is strong. But now it is cold. The sun goes down just as the school day ends. So we will have to wait out the winter till we can be together again. In the meantime, I will be working on the Hope Quilt. This project is funded by a grant from the State of Connecticut Office of the Arts. It will hang in the Adam J. Lewis Academy in Bridgeport when it's finished. The inner panel of my design will be applique. The border will be a patchwork. Each patch will have a drawing which answers the question, 
what gives you hope? Like all the art quilts I have designed, I'm counting on my friends at Piece by Piece to help one day with the hand quilting at the frame so that the hope quilt too will be ready for <clears throat> its big reveal in September, 2001. Love brings us together. Hope keeps us going. Of course, there's a backstory to every story. This is me in 1962 with my mother, Anne Rockwell, and my father, Harlow Rockwell. My parents were a picture book team that worked out of our home first in New York City, then in Old Greenwich, Connecticut. My mom was wildly creative. Her hands were always busy. This is a rug she illustrated and stitched with needlepoint about her favorite stories from the Greek myths. In the 1970s, and my sister Hannah. After school, Hannah and I would sit at the quilt frame and stitch. My parents were on, were on hand and sometimes neighborhood friends would join us. This is a very happy memory for me. Before Piece by Piece popped into my head, I taught art in after school programs in Norwalk. I saw what a calm and expressive way this was for my students to relax after school. Conversations flowed easily. With all this in mind, on Valentine's Day, 2008, I wrote to Reverend James Carter, the director of the newly formed Norwalk Children's Foundation, with a proposal for an intergenerational quilting project. He and his board funded the project for five years. Just as importantly, they connected me to a whole city of community partners like community organizer Berdella White. Berdella identified the location at Senior Court. She invited some of the residents, including her mother, Betty Mungo, to come to the first meeting. And I invited my friend Sandra Narraboyne, who was also a quilter. Thus began our partnership with the Norwalk Housing Authority. After Berdella, Isabel Garcia helped out with the program and recruited more young people. In our second year, I was asked by executive director of Stepping Stones Museum, Rhonda Keast, to design a quilt specifically for Stepping Stones Museum for Children. Rhonda challenged me to involve as many people as I could in its production. This was when I first included artwork drawn on fabric patches in my quilt design. I also got the idea for community quilting bees, which would pop up in unlikely places and invite passersby to lend a hand. They popped up all over town. Even City Hall, Chief of Police Rilling put in a few stitches on that day. Years later, Mayor Rilling officiated a quilt unveiling at the Sono Library. Our flagship quilt hangs at Norwalk Community College. We have had temporary quilt shows and quilting bees at the legendary 22 Haviland Street Gallery, a long running cultural force in South Norwalk owned by my friend, Dennis Bradbury. Who knew that years after we began, Christie's Quilting Boutique would open around the corner. Owner Christy Hughes is a great friend to Piece by Piece. We even have friends in Bridgeport. Quilting legend Denise Schmidt invites us to her studio for yearly quilting bees during the Bridgeport Art Trail. I'm honored to be hosted tonight by one of our oldest allies, the Norwalk Historical Society. In 2010, they gave me the challenge to create a Norwalk themed quilt and even raised the grant money for the project. We are forever grateful to the staff of the Norwalk Public Libraries for all their support over the years. Both libraries have hosted quilting bees, fabric art workshops, and unveiling ceremonies. The Friends of the Library even agreed to be our umbrella 501c3 so that we could raise much needed funds. So this is a Norwalk story 
about the good things that happen when many come together as one. And as libraries attest, stories are meant to be shared. Fortunately, my day job is as a storyteller. So I wrote this one down. I did my best to capture the faces and spirits of my friends on paper. I gathered fabrics together. And I made the quilt, which they make in the book. I got a little help from my friends. I worked on the artwork for over a year in my studio. I used computer graphics to combine my artwork in layers. One layer is line art. One layer is watercolor. And multiple layers are fabric scans spliced into the illustrations. And thanks to my, my editor, publisher Alfred A. Knopf, I can now share this local story with people I don't even know. Lizzie, thank you so <laughs> much. I mean, it's now one thing that um, I, I don't think you mentioned, but the, the members of Piece by Piece are actually in the book. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I was trying to explain that with this the slide of um, the sketches I was doing from photographs, mm -hmm. which were um, all my friends. So so all those names are of real people. Um, and I, I just want to point out, I do see a bunch of them on the on the chat. Can I just shout out who I see? Uh, because I see Emil Sayanes, who's who we call Vicky, a long time piece by piecer. Um, now working in a uh, bio, bio biology lab and um, I see Connor, I see Fran, um, who else? Maybe, oh, maybe I'm just looking on the chat. Uh, if you go to the participants, um, if you click on participants, <laughs> it's button, everybody. You'll, you'll see, uh, you'll see. Oh, there we go, 33, yeah. <laughs> So if Lizzie okay. calls out your name and you are a piece by piece member, um, please turn on your, your camera and your microphone because we wanna get you into the conversation and we're gonna be asking some questions. Uh, so if Lizzie calls your name out, please turn your camera and your microphone on. Go if ahead. you want to, but I would like if Vicki and Connor and um, Fran and... Who else do I have here? Uh, Anna, of course. Anna is here. Um, is that Emilsa? Hi, Vicky. Hi, Fran. Uh, where Anna's gone? She's here somewhere. Connor, but they don't have to. They don't have to if they don't want to. Um, Sam, I don't want to put anyone on the spot. Okay. Oh, look at Vicky. She's holding her pillow. <laughs> that is so beautiful. Nice job, Vicki. Well, um, all of our piece by piece uh, members, um, if, if you want to answer some of these questions so we can learn more about, you know, what it's like to be part of this fantastic organization. Uh, the first question I had is, um, how did you get involved in piece by piece and how long have you been participating? So if there's a piece by piece member who'd like to uh, talk, please go for it. Hi everyone, my name is Emilsa, but Lizzie and everyone at Piece by Piece calls me Vicky. I started going to Piece by Piece when I was a sophomore in high school. And one of our family friends actually brought me there because she saw that I had gone through some like hard times being bullied in high school. So she thought like volunteering would be a good outlet for me. And it was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. And this is the first pillow I actually made, which I still sleep on. So I'm very glad to be part of Piece by Piece. Oh my gosh. I just see my friend from Minnesota, Sarah. Oh my goodness, this is so touching. Vicki, I love you. Thank you for Thank joining you, us. <laughs> um, Fran, uh, Connor, or Anna, would you like to jump in? Uh, yeah, hi. Um, I'm Fran. I've been uh, going to Piece by Piece. Uh, I don't know, maybe seven, 
eight years maybe. Yeah, uh, I had asked Lizzie to sign a book that she had put my daughter's name in, 100 school days. And so I asked her to sign it and she said she meets on Fridays in in Norwalk at the community room. So I went and I've been going ever since <laughs> on Friday, so. Well, I have to fill in Fran's story because <laughs> Fran comes to, meets me at the, cause I lived in Bridgeport then. So she, I said, well, I'll be in Norwalk on Friday. You know, I do this quilt thing, I do this community thing and this is the location. And so she walks in the room and she goes, what's going on here? And I go, oh, we make quilts. And she says, oh, I'm a quilter. And it turns out Fran is like a spectacular quilter and, you know, knows way more than I do about quilting and, and um, is, is a true artisan. So she's, I, I think you were back the next Friday, Fran, I don't remember, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's brought, brought not just wisdom, um, but also her grandson, uh, Maurice, who's in the book, but he's doesn't seem to be on the screen tonight, but he's an awesome kid and a good friend of Connor's, of course. Hi, Connor. Hi, Connor. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, Diane, do we have any questions from the audience in the chat? You're on mute right now. Hello? Right oh, now, we don't have uh, uh, anything from the uh, audience in the chat. Uh, chat box, but please enter uh, anything that you want to ask uh, Lizzie and the other quilters. Now, I have a question for the piece by piece members. Um, uh, if you are a, a character in Lizzie's book, you know, what does it feel like to sort of be immortalized in a, in a picture book? I mean, it's going to be there forever. So how do you feel about that? Fran? Well, <laughs> I don't think it's sunk in because uh, someone asked me to sign it. I'm like, sign the book. I, it just, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing. I'm excited. Fran's a star. <laughs> now, um, someone's asking, uh, where can they uh, buy a copy of your signed uh, books? They're anxious. <laughs> Do you want me to, I'll, I'll address this for a second because um, Christy's, quilt, Christy's Quilting Boutique is carrying it and um, Sam has the phone number for her shop. Uh, she is the main walk in off the street brick and mortar um, place to buy the book. And if you call her, um, you could order it over the phone and then ask for me to inscribe it. I don't come to Norwalk every day, but if you can give it a little time, say it's a Christmas gift, I, I can certainly get in there um, when she has a few copies, you know, pulled together and sign them. Be delighted to do that. And also the Norwalk Public Library, they were making it available. Um, not sure if they have copies available. And the Fairfield um, University Bookstore in Fairfield has it as well. And I could sign those copies too. Um, along with uh, the bolt in Trumbull. But I'd say for, for Norwalk folks, um, Christie's is your best shot. And then you can go buy some fabric too, because she has the most beautiful fabrics. Um, and also all, all venues online, you know, including Amazon and Penguin Random House and barnesandnoble.com. They all are selling it. We do have some copies available at the library. And I think some of them you signed, Lizzie, and the ones that you didn't, we have um, book plates that, with your signature that we can put in. But um, you know, it's a limited number of copies, but um, if you call, we can let you know if we have some still. Thank you, Evelyn. I was gonna point out that Evelyn was here. She's one of the um, librarians at the main branch who we've collaborated with um, on so many projects. So I get to see you. your beautiful quilts every day. So thank you all for who Yeah, who <laughs> it's a joy. And if anyone wants uh, Christy Quil Christy's Quilting Boutique's uh, phone number, I did put it in the chat. Um, it's 203-807-8458. And the boutique is located at 176 Main Street 
in Norwalk, Connecticut. Um, but feel free to, you know, give her a call or jump on her website uh, to find out her hours. Um, so uh, another question um, I have is because we have so many participants tonight who aren't from Norwalk, um, mm -hmm. how or what's, what's some advice that you can give them if they wanted to start their own community quilting project? Um, well, they'd be certainly welcome to contact me and have that conversation with me through email. Um, as you could tell from my story about the origins of it, it is quite a complex um, experience over the past 12 years of, of getting this started and keeping it going. And there were so many very particular pieces that were in place. Um, and I think Norwalk uh, has quite a bit of um, intercommunal collaboration so that, you know, the, the Stepping Stones Museum, the Norwalk Historical Society, the library, the, founda the Children's Foundation, there were just so many, the, the Norwalk Housing Authority, so many groups that were able to connect with one another um, and then through that partnership helped me in a whole bunch of different ways. So I can't, I can't say what that would be like in your community, but you can always start really small and just uh, invite the neighborhood kids over after school for starters, you know, ha have your son or daughter start a project and get some friends to um, help with it and then maybe donate it somewhere. Uh, the thing about making communal quilts, you either have to make enough that everybody gets one or you have to decide you're going to make them and give them out into the universe. So, which is to a large extent what we do. Um, but there are ways to do it without funding and there are ways to do it where you probably would need some funding uh, to keep it going. So it's all about how complicated um, and how ongoing you want it to be. You might want to make one quilt over August and, you know, July and August, and, and you're done, and you finish the quilt and you send it off. So it, I never really expected to be doing this 12 years after I proposed it, but I'm happy I am. <laughs> <laughs> and we are happy that you are, for sure. Oh, thanks. Thank and I, I have a website, lizzyrockwell.com. I also have a website. It's still sort of in progress thealltogetherquilt.com. Um, but through my personal website, you can email me directly and ask me anything you like or ask to arrange a phone call. I'm One of the reasons for writing the book was hoping that this could be replicated elsewhere because it does, um, it does bring so much goodness to the people who participate and to the community that benefits from you know, their production. So I would love to see it in every town. I, I can't, I can't make it happen for you, but I'm happy to share, you know, what I've learned um, with anyone who's, who's, you know, interested, for sure. Well, I think we generated some questions about uh, people who want to learn how to quilt. And uh, they're asking, is it easier to learn how to quilt from an online video or in person? Oh, that is a great question. I think ideally, you know, in person is wonderful uh, because we learn we learn well through doing things with our hands, and we also uh, feel quite. I think we feel quite intellectually connected and present when we're interacting with real people. Um, and uh, but having said that, I have learned a lot from YouTube. <laughs> YouTube tutorials, it is, there's a lot about the internet I don't like, but YouTube is this really generous sharing place where people who know how to do stuff just want to tell other people how to do it. And some of that is for profit, but it seems that the vast majority of those, that sharing is just purely generous, you know? So, um, I have learned a lot from online tutorials, but if you can find a craftsperson who knows how to do the craft you want to learn or the musical instrument you want to play or, you know, whatever it is you want to try, um, 
that's always best. And that's another good excuse to connect with another person. And I know that feels impossible right now. And like, we're all trying to learn how to not ever have to do that again, but we will do that again. We will be together again. Um, Absolutely. And, and we will love every minute of it. <laughs> so, we can do that. so I think probably by the time COVID-19 is, is a, is a distant memory, we will want to spend some time off screen. This is delightful. Like, I can't believe you're all here, friends from all over the country and even someone from the UK. I mean, it's amazing. It is amazing what we can do. And we've pushed the boundaries of this now and learned a lot of good things. But when I can get back with my friends and back in that quilt house, Fran and Connor, and using our machines and, and you know, moving blocks around and, and doing that, um, you know, collaborative improvisational piecing that we do, it will be, it'll be a great day. So we're all, we're all looking forward to be able to socialize again together. And um, there's a question, can anyone um, be part of the, a future uh, project that comes up at the Colt House? Can anyone time? come to Piece by Piece in Norwalk? Okay. Um, yes, when we are reorganized and back in the building, I would like, um, I would welcome anyone to contact me if they're interested. Again, uh, just use my website, um, my email, it's lizzyrockwell at mac.com. Um, if you forget it, you can find it on my website if you can remember my name. And um, we'll talk about it. You know, if it's a very young child who wants to participate, they may need to come with the caregiver. Uh, I, I can't take responsibility for you know, children under nine. Um, and also if we are at capacity, we just can't handle more people in the room. I do have to cut it off once in a while for that reason. Um, but all are welcome if I can fit you in. <laughs> That's yeah. nice to hear. Yeah. Uh, there is a question, but how long did it take you to write the book and illustrate it? Um, well, I wrote the book in 2014 and it's 2020, it just came out. So that gives you some idea. Uh, some, some of just how publishing goes, you know, um, everyone, both myself and the publisher were working on multiple projects um, at one time and looking forward years into it, into the future. Um, but it, it, it took a lot of rewrites. It took, um, the artwork took, me so much time because I was drawing portraits of all these real people who are very dear to me and um, very, very individualistic people. And um, I, I just uh, worked really hard to capture that. And um, I also knew they were all going to see the book and I wanted them to be happy about being in it. And um, so that, that was all really hard. And then I had to draw people doing things like using scissors and, you know, measuring. And in the, the picture in the library has, I think, 38 people in it. Crowd scenes are always <laughs> pretty hard. Um, and then learning the Photoshop needed to combine my fabrics into the artwork. That was a big technical challenge. Um, and usually for most books, I don't have to make an entire quilt and hand stitch it on the frame over, you know, a, a six or seven month period. So um, this one was, was a tour de force. Wonderful. He already has some fans. They said to savor the book, go through it slowly. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, I saw one question asking, you know, what type of stories do you all share as you're quilting? And I think that was one thing that I wanted to touch on, you know, the fact that piece by piece is multi-generational. Um, you know, what are some skills, what are some lessons that uh, the older generation teaches the younger generation and vice versa? Maybe some of our piece by piece members can chime in um, about that. But I think speaking about, you know, about, the stories that go on and, and how you kind of learn from each other. Um, Anna, is Anna still available to speak? Would, she, would you like to say anything about that? Um, 
Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, the ladies are an endless fountain of amazing advice. Mm. <laughs> they really are. There's nothing that you can say that they have not heard. Um, so for me, that's very valuable. And, you know, it's also valuable for the children. Uh, Lizzie, what was that, that quote of yours about um, busy hands leads to talking? Um, well, I, I do talk about that a lot, that, that when your hands are busy, uh, your eyes are averted onto a project, um, conversation flows more freely. Uh, you know, kind of like when, when a parent is driving their kid in the car and nobody can look at each other in the face, they have the best conversations. <laughs> um, but I think that's true, Anna, that when our, when our hands are busy and our eyes are averted, we feel almost more comfortable connecting with the person sitting across from us. And we're sharing a common activity and it, it just, it, it, it clears a path. Um, but I, I liked what you were saying, so I don't want to interrupt it. What do you think? What, were, well, what did you want to say about the young, the kids? Well, but, but that's, that's just it. You know, the fact that the kids end up sharing so many things that they probably wouldn't otherwise share mm -hmm. if they weren't engaged in this task. And, you know, that's, that's a good thing. And, it, and it's a lot of, a lot of times it's a very charged um, subject matter, mm -hmm. you know, and, and again, with the ladies, you know, it's nothing that they haven't heard or, or maybe experienced themselves. And, um, it's a really good exchange, you know, and, and sometimes they actually disagree on how to approach a problem that someone's having, um, you know, and that, and, and that's a good thing too, because you get different perspectives, you know, and, uh, you know, it's 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 almost comical looking back sometimes at certain things that I've had issue with and the ladies all arguing amongst themselves on the best course of action for me to take, you know, um, because it just becomes this symphony of all their different <laughs> voices, you know. <laughs> um you know, and normally I would do all their little voices, but I don't, I don't think it's appropriate in this setting <laughs> to do that. But you can imagine <laughs> everyone's individual voice chiming in and, you know, no, I think you should do this. No, I think you should do that. And, and so it creates um, actually more possibilities than you would have thought of to sort of solve a problem, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a really good exchange. It's good for them. It's good for the kids. It's good for us, you know? So there's a lot that goes on. Yeah. And, and in 12 years, uh, I don't know how many dozens of people have come and gone through this program. Um, we've experienced our share of tragedies, you know, and it is all, um, it is all shared across the frame and, and, uh, it's powerful because a community of people who are not related by blood or even any common, <laughs> common background um, can become a family. You know, if they just, they just gather and share a common uh, goal and they just keep doing that over and over again, um, eventually a bond is, is formed. Uh, that is quite yeah, and I was profound. I was surprised to hear that some of these ladies were were not friends. Oh, can you hear me? Or you were you, you were gone minute. for a minute in the beginning, but now we can hear you. Oh, sorry. Um, I was surprised to learn because I came into it, you know, a couple years after things began. I was surprised to learn that some of these ladies weren't friends before they started quilting together because for instance, um, you know, they're, they're so familiar with each other, especially at this point um, 
especially since Betty moved away, you know, she talks to, to Ernestine and Viola regularly or almost every day. Um, and it, it was amazing for me to hear that, oh no, they hardly knew each other before piece by piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they were neighbors, but it's, it's interesting that even in a, a housing complex, there is a lot of camaraderie, but when, when people are in their later years, they're not coming and going constantly, you know, so they need a reason um, to walk out that door and just walk that short distance down the path to that community room. And um, it, it was so moving to me that people just were determined to do this during COVID-19. They were just gonna sit outside on the cold, damp bench and surprisingly be willing to hand sew for 12 years other than quilting at the frame. I couldn't get anyone to hand sew two pieces of fabric together because, you know, there are machines to do that. But once that was what we were doing, everyone participated in that hand sewing um, nine patch pillow project unanimously. Um, and it was, you know, just, just th that will to keep going and to be together and to have a reason to be together and have something to, um, you know, look forward to each week. And I remember Viola saying to me, she's now almost 92. And she said, she said, well, you know, I was getting older until you walked out in that door and I started getting younger. And mm -hmm. I mean, well, thank you for making my whole life feel suddenly worthwhile <laughs> with one sentence, but you know, it's just, it, it, it gives them a lot. It really does. And, and when we have another thing I'll say about the power of the program is that when we have those public unveilings, Diane, you've been at many of them, right? And Evelyn and many of you, many of my friends have, have come for every unveiling they, they could. Um, they are a big moment of pride for everybody. And to, to stand in front of a big cheering group of people while on the work of art that you spent a year and a half creating, um, is, it's not something people necessarily are ever gonna feel in their life, you know? And so to get that recognition and say, I'm an artist, I'm a civic volunteer, you know, I'm a collaborator. Um, that, that's really, really meaningful. And so I've been a witness to that, you know, over and over again. And uh, I, I think it's amazing. It, it's, you know, the technology makes it hard for my, um, my older participants to do this, uh, to do this kind of conversation on Zoom, but you would, you would love them if they were here and they would love being here. So maybe next time I'll <laughs> get working on it a little, little harder. But Lizzie, thank you so much. Um, you know, just by, just by reading the chat, um, you know, just what people have heard today, they've been inspired. Uh, Kelly from, I believe it's Minnesota, um, said that she's inspired to try to start a community quilting uh, program. She works for a senior housing uh, development. And she was wondering, um, is there an, a large indoor space that you could use at the center um, and limit it, you know, very social distanced uh, to continue quilting throughout the winter, even though COVID is still with us? Um, hi, Kelly. It's so nice to have you here. Um, so the community room where we do meet at, at senior court is a large room, uh, but they won't let us, you know, I, they won't let anyone, it's a senior complex, they won't let their residents gather there. So yes, unfortunately, we're not allowed to do this uh, in that room. I don't know where there might be a bigger, a bigger indoor space that we could use. Um, I think that what I'm going to be doing is just what I've been doing. Uh, any times, you know, in the in March 
to June, we, we couldn't meet. Um, a lot of phone calls, a lot of pop-ins. You know, I, I text with the kids. We have so many ways that we do communicate and Anna and I try pretty hard to stay in touch with people. And also we're providing the ladies with ongoing um, materials to keep sewing at home. Uh, and that's, that's going pretty well. So, yeah, but I appreciate, I, I, we'll have to chat, Kelly. We'll, we'll do some more brainstorming because I know you have great experiences. Um, wow, these are a lot of good, good comments. I can't, I, I'm distracting myself by reading them. <laughs> by reading them all, right? Yeah. Diane, um, any other final questions before we close off? That's great. Is it time to go? Aww. It is. It was wonderful, Lizzie. I hope you guys had fun. Oh, it's oh, there's Kelly and your beautiful sister, Sarah. And thank you all, all my friends here. You know who you are. I so appreciate you being here. And um, anyone who I don't know, thank you for coming. I hope, I hope it wasn't boring. I hope you got some good ideas and you'll you'll contact me if I can help you in any way. So and good to see you, Connor. Um, yeah. All right. So I, I, um, I don't think there's any more questions. A lot of thank yous and wonderful program and a lot of people saying that they, um, that they purchased your book already, which is wonderful. Um, and, uh, so this is, this is great. So, Lizzie, thank you so much for, for sharing um, not only your love of quilting, but your love of community. I mean, truly you have created um, a family, you know, like you said, it, it's a family of quilters and you all stick by each other. Um, and I think that's a beautiful thing for our community to have. And we hope that you have inspired um, all other people out there who've joined us from all over the world to hopefully start their own quilting community or some type of community group uh, to, uh, to build that family spirit. So thank you so much. Well, thanks so much to the um, Norwalk Historical Society. Uh, as I said in my slideshow, Sam, I don't, you weren't there when we first started working together, but Diane and I go way back. And um, I think that that Norwalk Quilt Trail that we got launched on uh, really powered the program for just meant, oh wait, we're not done. We have another big quilt to make. And um, it, it really, really uh, gave us a whole bunch of renewed energy and we're very grateful. Now, Lizzie, one thing um, before we close, how can people donate to Piece by Piece, either monetarily or through fabric and sewing supplies? Uh, that's a great question. And we're so grateful to our donors who really have kept this thing going. Um, we are fairly at capacity for materials because we do have just a small closet, but we're always open to suggestions, <laughs> Fran. <laughs> Fran's like, no, we're not. Um, but yes, no, we, we're very, very grateful for fabric donations. We've been going through so much fabric this summer. Um, and as for monetary donations, we, we are able to take donations. I think I'm, uh, I need to make sure that we're all back and doing this before I accept any large gifts because, um, you know, but I think in, in the new year, I'll have a really good sense that, that things are moving forward and people are still willing. Fran, you'll come back, right? Connor? <laughs> There's Fran's beautiful pillow. Um, so we, we do, we can accept uh, financial donations um, through the Friends of the Norwalk uh, public library systems. And I think the best thing to do would be to just email me if you would like to make a donation and I can certainly um, give you all the proper information. I, I don't have like an easy click here to, to tell you how to do that. It's a little complicated, but um, we have very much benefited from our financial donors, um, you know, to, to pay uh, one staff person and um, supplies. And we used to, when we do have funds, we do things like take field trips and, you know, we, we do all, all the extra special things that are so enriching. Um, so, 
Excellent. No, that's wonderful. And so if, if anyone uh, wants to donate, um, you can visit Lizzie's website, uh, lizzyrockwell.com, um, and, and please contact her. And if you're looking to introduce the beautiful world of quilting to your child, to a child in your life, doesn't have to be your child. It could be any child, <laughs> part of your life. Just grab a child. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, Lizzie's book, The All Together Quilt, is truly the perfect um, holiday gift. So once again, if you are in Norwalk, visit Christie's Quilting Boutique at 176 Main Street, 203-807-8458. Um, you can also Google her and uh, visit her website. Um, and then Lizzie had mentioned for those people who aren't local, uh, you can buy the book on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Penguin Random House. Um, and to our audience, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for your wonderful questions. And we hope that you'll join the Norwalk Historical Society again. Uh, in the new year, we will be back with more uh, virtual lectures and hopefully uh, in-person lectures once we can again um, and, and in-person events. And if you want to learn more uh, about the Norwalk Historical Society, uh, you can visit our website, norwalkhistoricalsociety.org. And if you'd like to make a donation, you can do so right on, their, right on our website. And that helps us keep history and culture alive here in Norwalk. Uh, so thank you to Lizzie. Thank you to all our special guests tonight. And um, have a wonderful holiday, everyone. Take care. Love you guys. Thanks for coming.